we'll do it one more time. So we look for the, the egg first. Is it horizontal, is it vertical? Where is it in relation to the head? Smaller circle, that's the head. Don't worry too much about proportion. Um, as you'll find out today, we're going to be pushing paint around and, 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 it's, and it's fine if you have some distortions. This is not a scientific drawing class. But after you have the large egg, the small circle of the head, look for the top line that runs down and that's gonna create your tail. It usually comes right off the back, which is that upper curve of that, of that egg. Then you have the beak, which always anchors into the base of the skull. And very quickly, you end up with a bird. We're not too concerned with the positioning of the feet right now either. Okay, now if you were gonna get fancy and put wings on, you could put them right on top, but we're not. Body. We'll do one quickly. Okay. We need to know where to place his legs. So we have a wing sort of a mockingbird looking bird. Okay, but we don't know where to put his legs. The, the, the bones of the wing are like this. This is what you, what's inside the bird's body. This is, the, this is the elbow right here. This is the part, I mean, I'm sorry, this, is, this corresponds to our elbow. This corresponds to the wrist, and then the bones spread out on the inside of the wing. So, directly beneath the elbow. And when you look at the bird's wing, that all attaches right, right behind where the, where the visible wing meets his body. So if you have this bone inside his wing, this elbow is where the legs are. The legs are always directly below the joint in the bird's wing that corresponds to our elbow. And so once you start, especially a bird in flight or some, some birds whose wings are outstretched, you can actually very clearly see the structures in the wing. But even if you can't, you kind of can, can visualize. You have to have room for that little joint, so you know it's gonna be about there. So this bird, legs are gonna be there. Because if you go straight down, from the elbow joint, which is right there, then you have where the legs attach to the body. Okay, I'm gonna use that number 10 round brush, use its little absorbent properties to pick up some blue. We're drawing, we're draw, we drew the egg, we're gonna paint the whole bird, but we, but we wanna know where the egg is located because that's gonna give us our bearings in drawing the bird so that we don't end up with the bird all over the paper. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and stick your, stick your pencil down so that it's just very light. You wanna be able to see it clearly, but um, not, not have it dark enough that it shows up. Okay, all right, now I'm gonna drop some paint on the upper part of his body. It's fine if you have a drip. Okay. Now I'm gonna, that's the blue, but I'm gonna come back and put a little red on top. This comes out differently every time you do it. Are you, are you rinsing your brush in between? I am, yes, I rinse the brush and put a little so I put, the, I put some blue there, and it doesn't have to be exactly there, but it's on the front half of the egg. It's up toward the beginning. We want to leave a little bit, we don't want them to be so, painted in solid. We want to leave a little bit of white on the paper because that's how those beautiful, thin um, textures show up if you have the paint in contrast with the white. I'm gonna put a little bit, tiny bit of blue back at the back, just a little down here, and then put a little bit of yellow. So I've got some drips kind of all around in the, generally in the egg. OK. 
Okay. Now I'm going to dry off my chip brush. And now this is the fun part. Okay, I'm going to hold it so that it's not splayed out so that I get kind of a narrow, a narrow brush. I'm going to start with his going up, up toward his shoulder. I'm going to go over his back and then start to thinking about those curving, the curves that exist in his feathers. Did you wet the brush out? No, the brush is dry. Okay. okay. So now I have, I have a drip, and I'm not concerned about that. There we go. We'll blot that up a little bit. So now, but what I really want are a smooth shoulder, a round shoulder. So I start up this way. Then I want some of these soft feathers hanging down down here. If he looks too pale and you want to add a little bit of color, you can, now that it's, it's wet, the color is sitting there on your paper and it's, it's wet, you can come back. And you can drop in additional paint if you want to. It will it will flow where the paint already exists. So if you drop it inside, it'll follow those little feather channels down. It, it, okay. Keep your paper flat so that it can flow across the the paper. Now. Once you have his back and some of the feathers hanging down, I've left some white places. I didn't really worry too much about the, about the middle looking like a, like a, um, a herring. So I've, got his, I've still got the front to go. I can still pull some more color down if I want to make the feathers longer. But I'm going to come up here. I'm going to put some blue. Right here. bit of red just for so that you have more than it's nice to have more than one color okay right on the front edge and now I'm going to take this number 10 brush and I'm going to go up and around just like that so that I end up with a sort of an S shape that is suggestive of his head when you get to the top it's going to taper off in a point just come back and you can put a second little second little touch there so that you get, then now you have the actual shape that you can, you can plug his bill into that in a minute when we, when we get ready to do that. But he also has feathers that hang down. So I'm taking my chip brush, here we are again with the chip brush, at the base of his neck. We have more of the texture that we want. Then he also has this amazing feather on his head. This bird's feather, I don't know if it's blowing up or if it's very high. His feather goes way up, but I'm going to actually, I kind of like the traditional um, heron feather that sort of swoops down a little bit. So I'm going to actually push the bristles together on the chip brush. I'm going to pull mine out this way so they look more like a traditional heron feather. Okay, and one, because it's wet and the paint is still flowing, you can drop paint back into your bird if you want to make if you want to make anything more intense. If you if you feel like it's too pale, you can come back and drop paint in. You don't you don't want to um, what you don't want to do is is um, you want to let it flow. So so you can drop the paint in, but you don't want to use the brush and push it around on the paper. You want to let the paint just go where it wants to. The main thing you want to use the brush to control are those arcs and those edges that, that, um, that hang down on the edge of his, of his feathers, all the soft, soft texture that he has. Let him dry for just a minute. 
and we'll put his beak and his legs in. He's a little distorted because of the camera angle, but we will we will press on. Okay. You have a smaller brush, I think it's a number four, in the um, for his beak. And what I'm going to do with his beak is pick up a little bit of yellow first. I'm also going to leave a little white space, a little, if you have the angle, if you ended up with the angle, right in the angle is where the eye is going to go. So we're going to reserve that space. It'll show up well. As I said, we're not trying to have a, a scientifically accurate hair, and we're just trying to make a something beautiful and spontaneous that that represents a heron. So you can do his beak in yellow, and since we are mixing our colors on the palette, I have a thin coverage of yellow. Then I'm going to come back with a little bit of red, so that I end up with an orangey, an orangey beak. Are you recording now? I am. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it's on. Thank you. Um, the other thing about the hydrology of watercolor is watercolor flows from wet to dry. It wicks to the driest surface. If two surfaces are touching, the watercolor will move toward the drier surface. And what that means is that if you have a wet bird beak, like I do on my paper, I can dry off my brush. I can come back with the tip of it and pull it right down the middle and it will lift the watercolor right off, back off the page because the paint wicks back up into the dry brush. It flows back up and fills the spaces between the brush bristles. So if I want to lighten the beak, all I have to do is come back with a dry brush and very lightly touch it, and it vacuums the watercolor right back up into the bristles off the paper. And if you have a light touch, you can actually get the paper right back to white with most colors. Some, like alizarin crimson stains the paper, so it will be pink, but it won't be fully white. But you can pick the paint right back up, and you can see the white in the middle of that beak. That's just where it lifted the paint back up off the, the paper. Okay. And actually, I was thinking all we would need would be three cups, but in order to do his eye, we mix a black, a warm black. And we get that right, combine all three colors. Depending on the shades of color you're using, you make it just a really dark brown that will work fine for his eye. And what you're going to want to do is start with the lightest color, put a little yellow in the cup first. You always mix, mixing colors, you always start with the lightest color and add the dark colors to it. Otherwise, if you can add a tiny bit of blue to yellow, it instantly turns green. But if you had a cup of blue and you were trying to add yellow, you might add a gallon of yellow before it lightened up. So you want to put a tiny bit of yellow in the mixing cup and then add a little bit of blue and a little bit of your red and you'll end up with a either dark brown or um, if you're using the right combination, it will be sort of charcoal. And put that next to the cup, put that next to the cup, and then If you're going to add the eye, wait until any adjoining paint is dry. It'll just take a few minutes. Otherwise, his eye will be much bigger than you had wanted it to be. <laughs> it will expand. So this is under the lights. It's pretty. Um, but if you have a, a primary yellow, a cool red, and ultramarine blue, you, you should be able to have black. Right, start with yellow, then add, <coughs> add a, then add a little bit of red, and then, then blue will uh, take, that, take that orange right down into to charcoal gray and then black. You don't need very much. Oh, we have to put legs on him, too. OK. 
Okay. To your black, you can add after you, um, once you have done your Once you have done your um, eye, it is, yeah, it's still recording. This is actually the black that we mixed for the eye. After that, I loaded up my brush with yellow and then didn't mix it, but dripped it down the side, so it went back into the black. It turns it back into brown. So you can use that same color if you want to, um, or if you would want to, if you want to mix it fresh, you can do it just by mixing um, yellow, mix an orange with your red and your yellow, then drop a little bit of blue in until you get a brown. And I have tons of cups, so you are welcome to as many cups as you want if you want to mix them. Some colors, and I was just mindful of the way his leg looks. He has sort of a thigh, and then with pressure, of course, you know, lifting in the tip of the brush makes a fine line. More pressure makes a thicker line. Lifted, it makes a fine line. You can control that so that you can make the actual shape of the bird's leg by starting at the top with a little bit more pressure, and then lifting it as you go down so that it gets small. And then I put his big old knobby knee joint down there at the bottom, and then put the other part of his leg underneath. So you can you can do it that way if you'd like. It, I think that works better than just a straight line. It kind of gives you the sense of of his um, his. Uh, this is the number ten that round. But if you hold it vertically and use just the tip, it makes a pretty a pretty thin line. You can kind of play with it. I like it because you can make it wide or narrow. You can use a smaller brush if you would rather. And we'll be using this more, this um, pressing and lifting more making leaves tomorrow as well. Because it's a kind of a key thing. I touched a little tiny bit of blue, and this is optional, but it's just why I did it. Um, in painting, I touched a little tiny bit of blue to the brown on the far leg, the leg that's the farthest away. Things that are deeper in value, darker, seem to sink into the paper, and naturally will look like they're more distant, so, it, so, that, so that the leg would look, as, look like it might be um, a bit farther away than the other. I just went ahead and added a little bit of blue to it. <laughs> 